and welcome to SW. I'm Eileen Fries. I'm Manuel Scheibler, and I work as a project engineer in technical sales. Today, we're standing in our assembly hall at SW to see the new W06 and to take a closer look at gearbox and clutch housings. Uh, Manuel, maybe you can quickly explain the differences between the various gearbox and clutch housings. Yeah, there are a lot of different variants of gearbox and clutch housings. For example, we have the longitudinally installed 8-speed automatic converter, or the double clutch transmission. And now, of course, there are more automatic gearboxes since manual controls are continuing to fade out. How will things change in the future with electric vehicles? What we've seen a lot recently is changes with hybrid vehicles. We've seen a considerable increase in housings for integrated electric motors in the gearbox housings themselves. Okay, what does that look like for the work pieces? Are there any specific features that change? Yeah, mainly there's an interface to the connection for the electric motor. When we move a bit further into electric vehicles, they change even more. That's a stator housing, which is really the stator from the electric motor, integrated into the gearbox housing. These work pieces are relatively large, so automated solutions are often popular with them. Uh, we'll get into more detail about this later, but since we're standing here in front of the machine, uh, I'd like to hear a bit from you. With the highly precise requirements of these work pieces, what are the characteristics that a machine needs to have, or that SW machines have, to meet these requirements? Well, first, as you already know, our motto is, we think systems. So we think in manufacturing systems. We want to consider the entire process, from unstacking the raw parts to supplying a complete machined and pressure-tested workpiece. That's important for all of our customers, because we don't just want to sell a machine, but we want to really find the best solution for the requirements of the workpiece. Exactly. And we have a variety of features on these parts that are really precise. So there's actually important specifications, especially for the bearing seats or bores, the position and shape of these features. So, we put strict requirements on our machines too. This precision requires stability, which is in our SW design principles. For example, our core element, the monoblock. This machine structure offers rigidity, stability, and especially temperature stability. Then we have the double swivel carrier in the two-table variant of the machine to achieve loading and unloading in parallel to machining time. We have the box-in-box -box system, so small mass and high dynamic with very high rigidity. And we also have variations of different spindles, the number of spindles, and the size of the spindles. Right, and SW machines can have up to four spindles. Uh, how does it work with a single table machine? Does that make sense with this kind of part? Uh, if so, when does it make sense? Yeah, it definitely makes sense. We just happen to be standing in front of our brand new W0621, and it absolutely makes sense. Especially since these types of housings usually have really long machining times, and the loading time of the part isn't really a huge factor. It's a very interesting alternative. It's cheaper, there's fewer clamping positions or nests, so you don't have to pay for them, operate them, or load them. And the single table model is available with one or two spindles. So if you have large production numbers, it might make sense to machine with two spindles. Absolutely. Uh, maybe we can bring up one of the highlights of this machine, since we're talking about spindles. Uh, when we have these two spindles, what's something special this machine can do that the previous model couldn't? So, in this updated machine, 
we have an independent x-axis for the first time, which means we have a variable spindle distance. It comes together with the independent z-axis, and this means we can influence differences in the lengths and diameters of tools, compensate for them, and achieve more precision for the part in the process. So there's even more flexibility for the workpieces and for machining processes. Exactly. Before we get into more detail about the W06, I'd like to go back to the workpieces. Oh, what's special about this workpiece? So what comes to mind is that we have large housings made of aluminum or light metals and aluminum alloys with a lot of features to machine. This means we need a lot of tools and we're reliant on fast chip-to-chip -chip and tool change times. Um, how fast or slow is the tool change time in an SW machine? Well, with our HSK 63 spindle, for example, we have a chip-to-chip -chip time of 2.25 seconds, so we actually have a really fast tool change time. Despite our simple pickup system, we pick up the tool from the magazine. We don't have any complicated tool change arm or anything, which could wear out or cause problems. Or have to be replaced. Exactly. Or it could limit the weight of the tools. So we are very open here. So what is the biggest spindle that we currently offer for the W06, for example? We have the relatively new HSK-100 light spindle. We took the normal HSK-100 spindle, optimized it even more, and made it even more dynamic with a faster startup time, specifically for the machining of aluminum with large and deep bores. Like before, we also still offer the HSK-80 spindle and the standard HSK-63. Right, so we already talked a lot about single table machines, but of course SW also offers two table variants. What's special about that, or what can you share about it? Sure, so the customers who already know us know our two table machines, but we've improved them updated them and made them even faster. Like before, the two table machines make a lot of sense for parts with short machining times. The changing of the work pieces, the loading and unloading of the work pieces has very little influence. It also makes sense if you want to have a standalone machine, so a finished machine part from every individual machine. If you want the flexibility of having OP10 on one side of the table and OP20 on the other side, then it definitely makes sense to go with the two table model. We just talked about the tools. Uh, with the amount of tools that are needed for the parts, it's always possible that a tool can break. What does the machine do in this case? Or what does the operator at the machine need to do? So, of course, we have the option of tool breakage monitoring, which you should really purchase with the machine, because if we're already producing parts and then later realize that something's missing, the threads, for example, it's not ideal. First, we have our inductive tool breakage monitoring in the machine. This is an inductive sensor installed on an NC axis that monitors whether small tools are present or not. So, is a tool there or is it broken? We also have other systems to monitor the torque of the spindle, force and power consumption of the drives, to be able to alert the operator with an alarm if the tool is broken or worn out. And the completely new control panel on this machine, the C1 panel, gives this feedback to the operator. Um, maybe you can tell us a bit about the tool runout inspection? Yeah, so we have high standards for the bores and the shape of the bores. It can happen that the tool or the tool holder builds up chips or other contaminants. So, we need to be able to measure this and also to say, stop, something isn't quite right. 
To do this, we have our air sensing system for tools, which can detect the smallest contaminants with airflow measurements throughout the bores on the spindle nose. This evaluation unit is really simple in the machine, and yeah, it's a simple system. For slightly more strict requirements, we have inductive tool runout inspection system. So on the same NC axis that we already talked about with the inductive tool breakage monitoring, there's also the runout sensor. That means the axis is already positioned in order to reduce the runout measuring times. And we actually measure directly on the relevant points, really close to the cutting edge to see if there's a tumble in the tool or not. And that's a really unique feature on the market. Und wir messen wirklich hier direkt an der Wirkstelle, also nahe, an der, wirklich nahe der Schneide, ob hier ein Taumel am Werkzeug vorhanden ist oder nicht. Und das ist, denke ich, einzigartig am Markt. And that happens directly during the tool change, right? Right. It happens above, directly in the tool magazine. So it's really nice. So it's done really quickly. Okay. Okay. I'd like to come back to the topic of automation. We're standing in front of a BA006 with automation doors. What can we tell customers about automation for this machine that we haven't already talked about? Yes, we have different variants depending on the customer's needs. For example, for a partly automated solution or a low number of parts, our new top rob is a great solution. A robot on a second level platform attached to a storage tower loads and unloads the machine. It's really efficient and space saving too. And we can see the automation doors behind us. Can you tell us anything about that? Sure. This is the new W0621 with automation doors, which are open right now. In this position, the machine can be loaded and unloaded manually and is easily accessible. When the automation is running, this door is closed and the robot can access the machine from above and it has a really large access area. It can reach in with the four-part gripper, for example. Large work pieces can be moved into the machining area, all without a disruptive safety fence system. Exactly. You can access the entire machine, and you can change tools easily. The operation of the machine is ergonomic and simple, and service is still possible even if the machine is integrated with automation. We also have the portal solution, which has its own highlights as well. What are the benefits for customers using SW as a single source provider? We have the machines, we have the solutions. Why is this an advantage for our customers? Right. So we really like to consider the entire process from raw parts to the unloading of finished parts. And of course, there's more to the process than just machining. Raw parts are picked up, scanned, and buffered in the storage tower, for example. Then there's machining and high-pressure deburring, for instance. Then washing, drying, tempering, and storing the workpieces in the storage tower. Then sealing plug assembly and leak testing the part. There are a lot of options that SW can incorporate. Even if you already have elements in your production that you would like to adopt, they can also be integrated. SW is really flexible in this way, and we work together as partners. How would you summarize this information for the viewers who are interested in gearbox and clutch housings? Uh, maybe they're already producing gearbox and clutch housings, or maybe they're looking at future projects. So, one benefit of SW System Solutions is, like you said, that everything comes from a single source and you only have one contact person. We also have the clear correlation between all the clamping positions in the line that we also talked about that reduces runoff time and cost tremendously. Then, with automation, we can operate the cells independently of each other, and we can design the cells according to customer requirements and workpiece specifications. Our designs are really very efficient, and as we mentioned, there are no safety fences, so the machine is really accessible. And with our new storage tower, 
There's a variety of work pieces that we can process on the same production and assembly line. In dem, mit dem Liftsystem wirklich auch unterschiedliche Werkstückvarianten okay. über diese Linie durchschleusbar und bearbeitbar. I think that's a great point to end with, and we can emphasize our motto, We Think Systems, which really means that we don't just find a solution for the machining process, but for a complete system and for your product. Manuel, thank you for the interview. I hope you were able to take something away from this video. And until next time. Thank you.